What's going on everybody? So today's video should be a lot quicker than normal. I'm going to be going over the basic types of network topologies and really this is a very simple topic, very easy to understand and almost self-explanatory. So the three topics or the three network topologies that we're going to be covering today are the star, the mesh, and the hybrid. And I'm also going to touch on uh, what's called a partial mesh, full mesh, and also ring and bus topology, which these two I think have fallen out of uh, teaching from Cisco because they're usually considered uh, old technology, like ring was for token ring and bus was, uh, I forget the standard, but very old. Bus was actually, I think, the very first network uh, topology type and networks just don't work that way anymore. But I'm still going to mention them just for the sake of mentioning them. So let's start off first with the star topology. This one is very simple to understand and it looks like this, especially if you have any books. So you might be thinking that that doesn't really look like a star, but main concept here is that you have one central networking device. So I'm just going to put a C for central and you have a lot of other networking devices hanging off of that. So that is your star topology and actually this is the topology of access layer switches. In the last video I went over the three tier networking architecture. I'm going to be referencing that a lot in this video because we can see most of these uh, topologies happening in that design. So this would actually be the design of your access layer switches and all of these would be your hosts because you have your one access layer switch and all of your hosts connecting to it. And then past that you'd have your you know, two connections out to your distribution layer switches. So technically when you look at an access layer switch isolated in an incident like this, it is a star topology. And for exam purposes, a star topology is just gonna be anything that has one uh, central hub that everything is gonna connect to. I'm gonna use the word hub, I'm not talking about an actual hub, that right there, the example was a switch. Now the second one is gonna be a mesh topology. And, uh, Let's, uh, I'm just gonna kind of draw out a new one here. So we're gonna use three devices down here and three devices up here. So a mesh is broken into two parts, either a partial mesh or a full mesh. And what a mesh means is that every device has a connection to every other device. So here, if we were doing a full mesh, this one would have a connection to all of these devices, plus that one. And so with this one, and this one, this is actually really annoying to draw. Hope I didn't leave any out, but you kind of get the picture, I guess that one. So in a full mesh topology, you have redundant connections to every device. Now the problem with a full mesh is that if you're doing this with like your switches, or especially if you're doing it with hosts, that's just unimaginable actually. But if you're doing it with all your devices and your network infrastructure, that's going to be cost prohibitively expensive if i'm using those words correctly it's super expensive to do a full mesh which is why you normally don't see it normally you will see a partial mesh you'll have your full mesh between your critical devices so like let's say this is kind of the core we have a full mesh going on uh here and then say this is like our distribution layer like i said from the last video and we only have a partial mesh going on here. Like, see, there's no connection between there or there. But over here, we've got our full mesh. So that's what's called a partial mesh topology. When you have kind of a mix of the two. That's also um, what you would call a hybrid topology. If you look at this whole thing, say these are your distribution switches, and then you got all your access layer switches over here. What do we have now in this uh, hybrid topology? Well, here... On these two ends, we have star topologies. Here is a partial mesh. And then over here is a full mesh. That's what we mean with by a uh, hybrid topology. It means overall you have uh, different topologies all thrown into the same uh, network design. And if you think back to the uh, three-tier network design, down here you've got a bunch of star topologies. 
right here we have a full mesh connection well technically that's a partial mesh because our access layers don't have connections between each other but for the most part a full mesh and well I guess we could just call that a partial mesh and then if we add a connection up here in our core then right here we can say we have a full mesh design between our distribution layer and our core layer and overall we can call that a hybrid network design and really that's um, that's about all that needs to be covered especially for the exam purposes um, star mesh and hybrid are your three main network topology types and mesh can be divided into a full or partial mesh it's pretty self-explanatory I mean I don't mean to insult anybody's intelligence but mm, it's pretty pretty simple stuff now you've also got your ring and your bus topology which I don't believe are testable but it's good to know what they are anyway but basically back in the old days you had what was called a bus network and it was literally a cable coax which went to one computer from that computer to another computer from that computer to another computer and then when you ended it you had to put on a termination cap on that cable or else it wouldn't work and your information would flow through that cable through each computer each computer would see if the, the data was destined for it or not if it wasn't it would just ignore it and then the data would keep flowing down the cable until it hit all the computers that was how a bus network worked it was just a bunch of computers daisy chained together in a single network now the ring topology is essentially the same thing as a bus except for it's not a the, the cable isn't capped at the end uh, it doesn't just end to nowhere you actually continue the connection on by wrapping it back around so a ring topology would be like computer to computer computer to computer computer to computer and then complete the ring right here whoop and this was generally associated with a token ring which was a network standard way back in the day where each computer could talk on the network by having the token and that was its turn to speak kind of like the speaking stick and this token went around and around the ring and when each computer had the token it was their turn to speak but that is gone a uh, little interesting tidbit of information if you're ever working with VLANs in a switch and you see that there is a um, VLAN range reserved for I think it's FDDI I believe is what that is that's actually a token ring standard it's still built into switches and uh, VLAN numbers are actually still reserved for token ring functionality even though you'll probably never see anything token ring ever now I bring ring and bus up mainly to tell you about ring because ring topology is actually still a thing in the internet backbone and in transport technology this is outside the scope of uh, Cisco book and all that but if you've ever heard of Sonnet or SDH or uh, OTN I believe OTN still requires a uh, ring topology I'm not exactly sure but all of these use almost exclusively a ring topology. I don't think they require it, but they're always set up in rings. So a sonnet ring will have your nodes. You can think of them like routers, but they're really uh, optical switches, basically. Uh, sonnet is actually a layer one technology, even though it is a protocol. And those are always set up in a ring topology. And usually it's a dual, uh, fault ring just something I don't really remember the exact terminology but there's a send and a receive uh, fiber line between each of these so that if one of the nodes were to go down information would just switch to flow the other direction to get out and same if just one fiber fails uh, the ring switches directions in order to get information to where it should go so I kind of disagree with them taking ring topologies out of the study because ring topologies definitely still exist in backbone transport. They just don't really exist in the uh, user or the uh, small business enterprise scale networks. But anyways, that's all I got to say about the networking topologies. Those are should be all the ones that you will see 
Uh, your main ones you're worried about are Star Mesh and Hybrid, which are pretty self-explanatory, like I said. Um, if they weren't, hopefully you learned something from this, and hopefully you can apply this in your studies somewhere. But other than that, uh, happy networking, and I hope to see you in the next video.